It's Q&A time. I have reached the 1000 subscriber point on my channel. I just want to thank all of you so, so much for the support. Uh, honestly, I didn't think I would get this far. 1000 subscribers is not really a big deal on YouTube. There's people with hundreds and thousands and millions of subscribers. But uh, no, I'm just a little channel. It's just little old me just playing card games. And yeah, I, I guess... Um, I guess what I'm doing, uh, I guess uh, it's struck a nerve for some people. They they actually like watching. So thanks for watching. And before I get started with answering the questions, I want to show my new play mat. It's uh, me, the Dragon Lady, with my uh, favorite card in the whole wide world, the Tyrant Dragon. And uh, if you want to check out this artist, his name is Jackson Gee or Jackson G. I'm not sure, but he does take commissions. So uh, if you want to check out his artwork, I will have a link to his site in the description below. So definitely check him out. Very talented. So yes, thank you so much for this artwork and thanks to Ink Gaming for doing the mat. So the first question is, what excites you the most in Yu-Gi-Oh? To me, I think the most exciting thing about it is actually when a match goes to game three or when there's a lot of back and forth gameplay. Uh, I don't really like it all that much if uh, a game lasts like one like one or two turns, although I am guilty of that given some of the decks I play. I, I do do OTKs, but I do enjoy it much more if the game lasts longer than that. There have been numerous times that whatever deck I play, the game will go on for like the first game in a match might last for like 20 minutes. And then I'm like, oh my goodness, we gotta go to game two. And the game two might be, you know, quicker. But game three, I love when, it, when a match reaches game three because that's when the pressure is on. I like it a little more when there's more time to play with. I don't like it when the, you know, the clock, is, you know, climate clock is, you know, going down the line. It's like, oh my goodness, we got to rush right. No, when there's a lot of back and forth gameplay, a lot of interactivity, that's, that's what all Yu-Gi-Oh is about. Not so much today, but it happens and I love it. Uh, you really have to use the resources that, uh, that's built into your deck to win the game. And sometimes you gotta use your deck in ways it wasn't really meant to. The, one of the most memorable duels I had with my Chaos Max deck was against a Trickstar deck. And this person basically got rid of my Chaos Max and all my Ritual cards. So I had to play Chaos Max without Chaos Max. Use the deck in a way it wasn't really built or designed to do. But I managed to do it. I actually beat the deck and man, it, it was close. Like, and it was a long game. So yeah, uh, stuff like that really gets my blood pumping. Uh, I also enjoy building decks. I really love, I'm not really a meta competitive duelist. I just like playing uh, fun casual style decks. And if it does well, I'm like, wow, uh, I'll just tweak it a bit more and make it better. So it's, yeah, I just love seeing what I can come up with and seeing how it stacks up to the competition. Doesn't matter if it's a casual time at the tournament or the meta day at the tournament. I just have to see how it stacks up. So yeah, that, that's really exciting. Do you think we'll ever get a Blue Eyes Fusion spell? We have to. I'm, I'm gonna say yes, but when? I have no idea. Like we have a lot, we have a lot of thanks to the internet. We can tell well to the future what cars, what to expect. We're not sure what sets now, but we, you know, we, we have a lot of uh, foresight what's coming out. And unfortunately, we're not seeing anything related to blue. It's like a blue eyes fusion. We do have a red eye style fusion it involves a dark magician and the red eyes black dragon, the dragoon of red eyes, but. No, as of right now, we don't have a Blue Eyes Fusion card. We don't have a Blue Eyes Link card, which surprises me. You, th you think for a card that has a lot of support, you think Links would be part of it, but no. But yeah, like, <sighs> we haven't seen anything in the future, but man, I'm optimistic. I think we will get one at some point. I don't know what the card will do, what the monster will do, 
what will they call the car? You know, blue eyes fusion. I mean, we got red eyes fusion, so why not blue eyes fusion? Or I don't know, like white dragon fusion, so, so, something fancy like that, something more, you know, better than what I can come up with. But yeah, I think there will be. It's just when. Come on, Konami, make it happen. What drew you to Yu Gi Oh? Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't drawn to it immediately. Uh, I did see the anime, and at the time, uh, during the late 90s, we, we didn't get a lot of anime on TV. So whatever aired, I ate it up. I mean, what could you do? Uh, I had the internet, but I couldn't really watch much. Uh, because we didn't have YouTube, uh, we don't have any, didn't have any subscriptions, anything like that. All you could really get was clips on websites you could watch, and I only had a 56k modem, so any clips I seen was mm, pretty short. But when I saw the Yu-Gi-Oh anime, I only seen a couple episodes of the English one, and it's it's it's, it's one of those so bad kind of good kind of genres. Uh, but see, one of my best friends growing up, um, he's the same way. Like he he enjoys anime, but he likes getting into the universe of the anime and, and Gundam Wing. Like he enjoyed uh, the little model kits, but he knows the card game. And when we found out you could actually buy the card game, uh, he wanted to give it a try. He said, "Hey, uh, do you want to, you know, learn the game with me?" And like, sure. I mean, it was summer, nothing else better to do. So what we did, he, myself, and another friend, we bought the Yugi and the Kaiba structure decks, and no joke, we spent the we stayed up the entire night. I think we we're up like 24 hours straight. We were just trading the decks back and forth and playing, learning the rules, and it was a lot of fun. I I didn't think I would actually get drawn that far into it, but playing the game and seeing you know knowing how anime works when it reaches North America I just had to watch the real deal so when I moved out here to uh, to our uh, province's capital uh, I signed up for eBay and I started buying the Japanese DVDs and I watched the show finished watching the show well uh, well before the English one was even translated here, so I knew well ahead of time what was going on and what cards were coming out. And when we moved out here, we actually got involved in the local tournaments. Uh, we ended up becoming judges, even running it, and it just, it just took off from there. So yeah, at first, not totally invested, but my friend, he kind of convinced me Looked at the cards, it looked cool. The game was really easy. It's nothing like it was today, not overly complicated, but that was the best way to get into the game. You just start off, you know, with the simple stuff, work your way up, and yeah, so much fun. And it had a really good community starting off too. So yeah, I think that's what really got me into it. What do you think would be the next big update in Duel Links? Big update, as in like, I mean, we do have a, we do have events every so often. I think like next big, big update, I think it's going to be the XE summoning because we have, we've had the synchros for quite a while now. So yeah, uh, when they're going to get into XE summonings, I don't know, but personally, I think that is where it's going to, you know, going to head next. It'd be interesting though. It's definitely going to make the game more complex because right now we can have synchros and fusion side by side. It, it can be a little challenging, but man, with Xe summonings, man, I can definitely see that bringing the Blue Eyes deck back into the forefront, into the meta. I mean, do Blue Eyes is still viable? You know, I've gotten the King of Games with Blue Eyes numerous times in Duel Links, but uh, I wouldn't really consider that to be like a a tier one deck anymore, maybe like a tier two, tier two deck, kind of. Like you can still do things with it, but I think Xyz would definitely extend its life uh, if they do plan and release more support for Blue Eyes. But just other decks in general, it's def yeah. I think it's Xyz summonings. I I actually can't wait. I haven't been playing Duel Links all that much lately, just off and on. Uh, usually I just uh, stay in legend rank and with the Kaiba Cup I've only gotten to like D level 19 so I'm just I still play but not as obsessed as I used to be. What event could make you leave the Yu-Gi-Oh community? Event? Um, I'm now I'm not really sure what this question means. Do they mean like game mechanic or just anything? With the game in general, I, th I think if anything were to make me leave the game now, um, 
it would have to be if all of a sudden there's a big onslaught of toxic uh, duelists, I guess. I, I mean, I don't think there's really anything. I can't think of what Konami can do now that will make me leave the game. Uh, as long as the community is fun and positive, you, you just adapt. Um, I left the game when Synchro was barely a thing. And when I came back, Lynx was new. Uh, it took me a while to get the hang of that, but see, due to all the new rulings, the game mechanics, the summoning, um, everyone was just so nice to me. So yeah, that's the boat I'm in. Like if, if I, I think the only thing that would make me, I mean, raise my eyebrow might be a new summoning mechanic that Konami would bring in. Uh, they're having Master Rule 5, which is going to be interesting. Very interesting, you know, we can have so many synchros, fusions, and XCs all in the <laughs> all in the main monster zone now, which is what I'm used to anyway, you know. Uh, but uh, a new sunny mechanic, I hope Konami doesn't do that. I mean, we already have enough to keep track of as it is. And Lynx, I will admit, isn't didn't really do the game a whole lot of good when it came to attracting new duelists. Um, if you already know how to play the game like I did, yes, I mean, you could adapt. Uh, but no, um, from Konami's, from the game standpoint, yes. Um, I wouldn't like a new summoning mechanic all that much, but it won't make me leave the game. I mean, you, you just relearn things and adapt to it. But if the community wasn't this nice, like if it was just a bunch of people who just cared about uh, just winning, just being real mean to people, just being toxic, like no, like that's that's probably what would make me get out of the local scene, but it's just not like that. It's been everyone's so nice, supportive, especially if you're a new duelist. When I was brand, when I, when I came back to the game in 2018, I was a little nervous, right? But everyone was wonderful. They're even giving me some, you know, cards, some tips, telling me, you know, showing me how to do the new summoning mechanics, how to link summon. This is how the rules work now. Like it was so much support. So no, I can't see myself leaving the game anytime soon. Maybe if I get bored, maybe take a break. I mean, maybe that might happen, but no, N not, not unless the community goes, goes way, way south. I can't see it happening. What are your top five favorite decks? Okay, favorite decks to play with. Okay, I like Chaos Max. I think that would be my most favorite one. Now, I like the like the traditional Blue Eyes build is fine, but if I had to pick a variant, Chaos Max, the Ritual Engine just made that card so much better, more consistent. You can still play Chaos Max in traditional Blue Eyes, but I don't know. Just I just like the Ritual better. Um, Nurse, Burn, and Samochi. I know not many people like going against it, but I like it because it's simple. It's the kind of deck that anyone can play. I mean, you, you can be from the old legacy Yu-Gi-Oh days, and if you came back to the game today, you could take the deck and just play it. And it's also a nostalgia trip for me too, because a friend of mine, we used to play uh, Samochi in tag team duels uh, years ago, so I found that to be yeah, a lot of fun. The Burn Mill deck. Okay, this is, this deck has gotten the nickname of the Tax deck. Uh, I have done White Go Pro duels online. I've done a deck profile on it, but it can be, an, it's a really annoying deck to go against. I'm not gonna lie. But the thing with me is, uh, the deck gives you, still gives you the ability to play. It doesn't stop your opponent from playing at all. They just gotta, be more strategic so because if you special summon too many times the deck can burn you it can even mill your deck so if you're not careful you can either deck yourself out or you can burn all your life points so no it's not like it's not like you're playing mystic mine and your opponent can't play no you can still play against this deck you just gotta be more careful and slow down a bit so Yes, it forces your opponent to slow down. It forces them to uh, think what they're going to summon. Uh, they got to pay to play sometimes. So yes, it's not a deck that I built to really win per se. Uh, it's it's just to see what it makes my opponent do. <laughs> like depending on what they're playing can really depend on. Uh, what their board's gonna look like. They're probably not gonna be spamming the board with all these special summon monsters with negate boards or anything. They had to think now. They gotta try to get rid of my back row with that. So yeah, um, I really like playing that one. Uh, 
rituals. Now, I know that's pretty broad. There's a lot of rituals, including Chaos Max. Uh, I like the ritual control deck that I've been favoring lately. Uh, again, I did a profile on that lately and the YGO, YGO Pro replay. But yeah, it's mostly, it started as my pure incantation decks, but then I started adding different monsters that can disrupt my opponent. So uh, the Peacock Baron, the Baroness, the Odd Eyes, Gravity Dragon, one Chaos Max, because this is a good beast stick, can't target or destroy it. Uh, just cards like that, uh, a Necros, just to turn off extra deck monsters, uh, Cyber Angel, so I can look up my Vanity's Ruler, uh, <laughs> things like that. So yeah, it's it's a deck that gives me a lot of options, depending on what my opponent is playing, and it's actually done pretty well. It topped uh, my locals numerous times, and it does make my opponents think a little on how they can uh, counter it. Um, last but not least, I really like the Ouija board deck. Uh, well, the Destiny board deck. I don't play that often. The last time I played was during Halloween because we had a Halloween themed locals. I just love the way it works. Now, naturally, when it first came out, it was impossible. There was just no point in trying. But now, now we have so many cards that can support it and then recent support from the legendary Duelist Bakura edition. So you got uh, Dark Occultism and Death Sentence, those cards really do make the deck work. It's not competitive. It, it just provides more options and more protection to get out uh, the death message, spirit messages. So yeah, it's like an anti-Exodia style deck. It's got a dark spooky theme to it. So, and it's very gimmicky. I love that. I love gimmicky. Uh, uncommon decks. So that's just my style. Yeah, so that's definitely my top five. What's the top five most frustrating decks to go up against? Oh boy. <laughs> uh, this is in no particular order, okay? But uh, zombies. Uh, I'm not alone in this. I'm betting zombies. I just... Now, it's not... It wouldn't be so bad. I mean, I can handle the zombie world uh, feel card. It's the Doom King. The Doom King is what gets me. He just keeps returning from the grave every turn. He has two effects and he can activate, including a negate effect. Um, sure, we can bait out one negate, but he can banish something else. So it's, ah, oh, you just can't win with that. Um, the only time I've been able to get rid of Doom King is by using a call by the grave. You know, just banish him from the grave, at least negate the other one on the field, but man, one I can maybe handle, but when two come out, I just scoop. I it's, 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 It is definitely frustrating to go up against. Um, another one will be Altergeist, which is ironic. I actually went against Altergeist today at a locals, but um, it, it was fun though, actually. It, again, it, it depends who you're going against. Uh, my opponent makes the deck fun, but it doesn't mean that <laughs> I like playing it. Um, the very first OTS championship I competed in, uh, the all of the everyone except one deck I went against was Altergeist. Very popular deck at the time. Uh, my first match was against Sky Strikers, which I won, but everything else was Altergeist. And I said, "Wow, Altergeist is a popular deck too." There, and they're like, "Oh no, there's only like three people playing it." I went against all three of them, so. <laughs> <laughs> but some went to game three, so you know, I can get around them a little bit. But no, I think the thing with Altergeist is uh, they're very crafty. You can get rid of one card, but they can make a comeback. So it seems like you have the, it seems like you have the upper hand at some points. But Altergeist, it's, it's a spellcaster deck, so they have a lot of resources and it, they just work so well together. So is it frustrating to go against? Yes, but I still admire the deck and I don't really go against it all that often. So yeah, it's, it's, I'll give that one a pass. Uh, my Banish deck. Oh, uh, okay. Um, if you've uh, kept up with my channel, there's a deck that I built for my husband. It's, I just call it the Banish deck. It involves the card Inferno Tempest. <sighs> I don't like playing with it. I don't like playing against it. I just know. Um, definitely a very mean deck. All it really does, is it has multiple win conditions. You know, you can deck your opponent out. You can burn them by... Uh, yeah, you can burn him to death. You can frustrate your opponent to submission. Um, it's just, yeah. The only reason I played it 
is because a few adjustments, made a few adjustments to the deck and we weren't really sure if the deck is something that's good for a casual night at our locals or the meta day at our locals. So what I did is I played the deck on both days to get a feel for it and it, it, it topped each time I played it. So I'm like, no, this, this is a deck that you should be playing during the meta. Um, I can't stand playing against it because well, it stalls a lot. Um, you can have a good board out as soon as you attack, a battle fade or a swift scarecrow comes along. You can have a real good boss monster out, uh, it gets kaijued. Um, if you attack, there's a risk you might get an infernal tempest which will banish every monster from your deck and grave. You can get an OT, uh, the Grand Monge can come out. So yes, it um, it is very frustrating. Uh, I don't like it. Like I said, the only reason why I built this is because my husband wanted a deck surrounding Infernal Tempest and I researched a lot of cards that involved banishing and that's what kind of, you know, I did a preliminary build. It got adjusted over time so I played a few times for testing and no, no. And my husband sometimes wonders like, well, why is, you know, I'll, I'll come people get frustrated by it. I'm like, you need to go against it to really get it. So yeah, um, unless there's another major adjustment made to it that I need to test, maybe I'll play it again, but no, I, I, I don't wanna play with it. I don't like going against it, even though I have beaten it almost every single time I went against it at the locals when my husband plays, so <laughs> yes. Um, Sub-Terror Control, okay. Uh, this one's really frustrating simply because of it really slows you down and the floodgates. Uh, at first I wasn't really sure what the whole fuss with subterras were. The only experience I had with them was in duelings and that and that can be frustrating too. Uh, all these uh, behemoths they can banish, they can destroy, especially some of the monsters, so yeah. And the subterror, uh, the trap card, they can just flip themselves over, reuse themselves. So it's never ending. But I went against them a couple times at my locals and yeah, yeah, I can see why no one likes them. I mean, I'm sure they're fun to play, don't get me wrong, but uh, to go against it, yeah. Um, summon Limit, um, Anti-Spell Fragrance, these are common cards that I've seen in Subterrors. They're just designed to slow you down, just to break your spirit, and man, does it work. But uh, fortunately, I haven't really went against it all that often, but yeah, it's, yeah, not, not too keen on those. Um, another one would be Cubics. Uh, there's only one person in my locals that plays it and like, you know, he's really good at the deck. He's really good. And the thing with Cubics, it's one of those card decks that, uh, if you, if you look at the cards themselves, every card has like, I swear, a paragraph, half a novel of text. So... If you're going against this for the first time, you're not really going to understand what it does. You can ask your opponent, okay, what does the card do? And they give you the gist of it. But see, the way these cards interact with everything else in the deck, and once they're removed from the field, that doesn't have to be by battle or, or card effect. Like, it doesn't matter if, if they're uh, destroyed by a battle or destroyed by card effect. You have to remove it in any way, shape, or form, like bouncing it, uh, their effects trigger. So yeah, it's, they're a little tricky to understand. Uh, they do massive burn damage, which is strange because I do play burn decks myself, but Cubix does it in a different way. I guess it's true what they say. It's easy to fear things you don't really understand. And I went against the, you know, Cubix uh, quite a few times actually. But even then, you, you never, unless you play the deck yourself, <clears throat> It can be really tricky to really get a full scope on what they actually do. So that's five decks I find the most frustrating to go against. However, for honorable mention, I will say this. Any deck that I find frustrating to go against is anything that builds a negate board. And we all know these. Uh, the, they were getting way out of hand not too long ago. Not as big as an issue right now, but take Dragon Links, for example. Uh, that can build up a really good negate board. Now, I am guilty of doing the same thing. At the last OTS Championship, I played Blue Eyes Dragon Links. And uh, I was able to pump out a hot Red Dragon Abyss Archfiend. I'm not sure that's his name, but yeah, that's a free negate. Uh, Hope Harbinger. I can get out Warlord Savage and the Heretic Sphere. So all of these 
are negate cards. And to me, it's, ah, uh, you're basically just stopping your opponent from playing the game. You go first and get like three plus negates, you have the scoop. I mean, I know that there are ways to get around them, but whew, like it involves a lot of luck. And I just know it makes the game extremely one-sided. And that's basically the reason why I played Mystic Mind for a while. I played Mystic Mind Burnt, Chain Burnt, and I did Mystic Mind Mill. I don't play them anymore because I think I made my point. The main reason why I played Mystic Mind is basically to say, hey, okay, like Mystic Mind does the exact same thing as Negate Board does, it just does it in one card. And sure enough, it, it, it works. So, so even though I don't play uh, Mystic Mind anymore, like I still support the card. In fact, I use one in my Ouija board deck as a tech card. So, so yeah, I still use a tech card, it's fine. But yeah, uh, Negate boards to me just, just get out of hand, but that's why I like uh, other alternatives. Like instead of Mystic Mind, I would use Dark Sanctuary. Uh, it gives your opponent the option to attack. Um, my tax deck that I talked about earlier, uh, it, it sets up restrictions, but it doesn't stop your opponent from playing like a Negate board would do. So no, so combo decks like that that make negate boards, they're really not my style. I mean, I've probably played combo decks maybe twice that will get out an insane board like that. And I don't know if we'll be playing them again because um, uh, we have another championship coming up fairly soon. So if I'll go that route, I'm not sure. Cause I'm not really, I'm, I'm a janky, Play, you know, have fun, you know, different decks kind of person. Not really a combo heavy negate board. So we'll we'll see what happens. But yes, uh, that that's definitely the most frustration of all time. Any deck that pumps out negate boards like that, I don't really like. But hey, it's just the way the game is. It's you know, it's it's the point it's gotten, and we just have to adapt. That's why I look at it. I may not like it, but. We just have to adapt and that's how the game is. So yes, but anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this Q and A. If I'll do another one, I'm not really sure. Maybe if I get to the 2000 subscriber mark, <laughs> who knows if there's any other questions that can be asked. But anyway, um, thanks for asking. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for supporting me all this time. Uh, I will still continue to make videos because my head is full of ideas. But as always, thanks for watching and remember to be a good sport. Play the game, not the fame. See ya. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, subscribe and be sure to click on the bell for notifications. You can also check me out on Facebook. The link is in the description below. Happy dueling!